Um, tonight we've got uh, Dom Malazzi, N1DM. He's going to be talking about uh, DMR, uh, digital mobile radio. And uh, Don's going to be presenting remotely, and I have him here. Okay. You started, there you go. All right. With you. that, I'll introduce uh, Dom, N1DM, who will talk about uh, DMR. Hi, good evening. Hi, Bruce. Thanks again for inviting me, and thanks to Skip for inviting me. Um, first, I apologize for not being there, but with the weather today and the fact that I had a root canal, I figured I would uh, <laughs> stay low today. But in um, any case, we'll talk about DMR tonight. Um, I think we're all kind of familiar with different things over the years. Uh, I have no preference in digital networks. I've been on DSTAR. I've been on DMR. Uh, I have friends on the ASUS System Fusion, NXDN, and P25. Uh, they all work. They're all good systems. Uh, you'll notice on this chart I'm showing you, two of them are in yellow, DSTAR and the ASUS System Fusion, which are ham-only digital systems. All these other ones are commercial. And I'll just go fast. P25 is, uh, was developed for police and fire departments. There are quite a few uh, people who've obtained radios over the years. They're very relatively expensive. Um, there's only 20 repeaters in New England uh, on P25. It's the oldest of the systems. D-Star was uh, developed by Japan Amateur Radio League in 2004. It's an excellent system, works well. I use it. I use it when I travel to California because there's an incredible amount of activity in the um, LA area on D-Star. Uh, there's 49 repeaters in New England. You have a big one, the UWB1GOF uh, up in Westford, which does well. They've got two repeaters, one local and one wide area. And the wide area one does great. Uh, it's one of the 15 in Massachusetts. It's a good system. Yesu System Fusion was developed in 2013 by Yesu. Uh, they're currently the only ones making radios for it. It uh, works well. Uh, it's an interconnected network system like uh, D-Star. There's currently 24 repeaters in Massachusetts that do YSF. Um, and I, I'm not going to skip over DMR from here, I'm going to explain that a little more. But NXDN was uh, is a commercial system de developed by ICOM and Kenwood together. Um, it was primarily deployed at this point to the railroad companies and some facilities like port operations, like the Port of Los Angeles uses NXDN. Uh, it's a good system. Uh, there's only a few repeaters in New England and a few in Mass. The ones in Mass are all congregated in southeastern Mass. Um, along the South Shore. Uh, there's a couple in Providence area, um, but it's basically a, a smaller system. There's not been a lot of activity. Only Kenwood and ICOM currently make radios for it. The MR is kind of an interesting system. It's, it was developed by Etsy, and I'm going to go to the next slide. The European Telecommunication Standards Institute is a commercial standard. There are a lot of manufacturers making radios. Uh, Names we're familiar with, Anytone, Olenko, Balfang, Connect Systems, Titera, all make radios. Motorola makes radios for it, as do a bunch of large commercial concerns. Um, you'll notice the name Kenwood doesn't appear on here with any prevalence. Uh, they do make radios, but only commercial radios. They make no ham DMR radios. And I just signed a PO yesterday for... Uh, 22 Kenwood radios, and I can tell you they're not cheap. They run about $1,500 a walkie-talkie. It's a nice system. It was designed, unlike some of the older systems like D-Star and uh, APCO Phase 1, it was designed around a newer vocoder, which works better, has a little bit uh, better headroom, dynamic range. Um, there's longer battery life on walkies that run DMR because they operate in time division, multiple access mode, TDMA. And I'll explain that in a minute. Don't get scared. By the way, uh, there's all kinds of things in here, like references to web pages and everything. Don't worry. At the uh, Tomorrow, I'll send Bruce and uh, 
skip a copy of the presentation in PDF so you can distribute it to the club uh, and people can have it. Uh, it. It'll give you all the links that I'm going to talk about tonight. System is spectrum efficient. It was designed to be uh, narrow band, and I'll explain that in a couple of slides down. But um, one of the things the FCC is trying to push with commercial vendors is to narrow band and get more channels in the same amount of spectrum. So this system uh, out of the box was designed that way. It's a digital network N10. You talk into the radio, it'll, it gets digitized in your radio, just like these star does, goes through the whole repeater system, comes out to the other person's radio and the digital signal gets converted to analog and into the, your speaker or, or headphones on the radio on the other end. So it's digital N10. Uh, the repeater carries all the traffic is digital. Uh, it's uh, for that reason, got some really nice features that we can use. One of the hey, biggest Dom. advantage of these DMR, I'm sorry, Dom. somebody said something. Yeah, Dom, it's Bruce K1BG. As far as questions go, would uh, you rather people ask questions as you go or would you prefer to wait until- it Makes end? no difference to me. Okay, so if- uh, if you have a question, shout it out, and we'll see if we can get it answered. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. The biggest advantage of DMR is you put one repeater up and you get two voice channels. It does this by sharing the channel, the one RF path in time, and I'm going to show you how it does that in a minute. The advantage, and these are called time slots uh, on, this, on all these systems. It's called slot one or slot two. Each time slot can support a lot of groups of users called talk groups. And those are, are designated by code. And I'll show you what those are in a few minutes. But the fact of the matter is you can listen, for example, is a DMR talk group for Skywarn. You can listen to the Skywarn talk group and not hear anybody else on the time slot if you want by just programming in the code for the Skywarn talk group on time slot one on the uh, local repeater system, and um, it, you'll only hear Skywarn calls. Uh, you also can program all these walkies to scan every talk group on every time slot. It depends on how you set the radio up. Uh, you, it, it should say used equipment. It should say used equipment available. It's starting to show up at flea markets. You're seeing uh, a bunch of DMR radios show up like a, De a Deerfield, Dayton, all the bigger flea markets starting to show used equipment up. So uh, it's available. It's not something crazy. Um, things are easy to get. How do you get two conversations on one RF channel? It's very simple. What they do is your walkie-talkie digitizes your voice in 30 millisecond, and sorry, 60 millisecond slots and every 30 milliseconds, it's, it compresses your voice and sends it into a particular slot. Don't worry, other than knowing if you're using time slot one or time slot two in the programming, what this means. The radio and the system figure all this out. If you tell the system you're on time slot one, it assigns you to time slot one when you get on the repeater and it locks you in. Um, it's very uh, transparent to the user. I told you it was narrow. On the left is what we could traditionally call a 25 kilohertz FM signal. For example, I think you've got uh, three repeaters in your area uh, that you guys use. Uh, those are traditional analog FM repeaters. They take roughly 25 kilohertz to pass one voice channel. DMR is only 12 and a half kilohertz wide. And that number was strangely enough, selected by the FCC, among others. Uh, the FCC is, has a, a mandate for uh, commercial users to move to this uh, bandwidth, and we have. I, uh, I can tell you that I, uh, in 2015, it was mandated anybody on high band VHF or UHF or police fire, oil delivery trucks, you name it, DPWs had to go to narrow band, and we did. Uh, it was not fun. I programmed 190 radios in one week for the local police and fire department. So I can tell you, you can do it. It just wasn't fun. But the advantage of DMR is it's designed out of the box to be spectrally efficient. 
Um, a lot of people complained about some of the original digital systems that they weren't as good as the analog systems. DMR was designed by using a bunch of mathematical constructs that uh, in the coding of the voice to be better than analog in, as the signals get weaker. Um, so it doesn't have the problem, especially uh, D-Star originally had a lot of problems with range compared to an analog FM repeater. Um, DMR doesn't suffer this problem. DMR for him started around 2013. Uh, when I joined in on the fray here in 2015, middle of the year, there were probably 12,000 users. There's now 230,000 users worldwide, and there's about 60, over 6,600 DMR repeaters. In the Metro Boston area, there's a bunch of repeaters, as there is up near you and Gardner, and there's one in Worcester also. Um, there's probably a half hour of activity a day. Um, and I'm going to talk a little about that a little later, because there's some ways you can find out how things are going on, and I'll show you that. Um, there's multiple DMR networks, and this confuses people. People build DMR networks for different purposes. NEDCN, which is the New England Digital Emergency Communications Network, is tied in with the DMR Motorola Amateur Radio Club Network, and it was designed to just be a general network. Um, there's 84 repeaters in New England, 96 in the system because there's some in Canada and some in New York. Uh, 19 in Massachusetts. Um, Connecticut has a thing called the Connecticut ARES system, which is 32 repeaters. They are all in Connecticut. There's no, no, uh, the only way to access is Massachusetts is a little involved. There's only a couple of repeaters that have the capability to access it. Connecticut ARES was exactly what it says. It was designed to support ARES operations. And one of their sponsors, by the way, is the Connecticut State Police Amateur Radio Club, W1SP. They have a lot of tactical channels. They have announcement channels. They have alerting channels. So their network is based around supporting ARES in the state of Connecticut. And by the way, some of their sites overlap NEDCN sites in Connecticut, but nonetheless, they are separate. There's an also a, a Eastern European system called Brandmeister, which is very popular. Uh, there's 15 repeaters in New England, six of those in Massachusetts. Unfortunately, the ones in Massachusetts don't have a lot of coverage. Um, they're kind of localized repeaters. Brandmeister is an on-demand system. For those who've been on D-Star and have had to pick a reflector you want to talk on, it's very much the same. Brandmeister system has 1,300 available talk groups. You want to practice Portuguese with somebody in Portugal, you get on the Portugal talk group. Uh, you want to talk to somebody about model airplanes, there's a model airplane talk group. Um, so they have a lot of talk groups. It's an on-demand system, and it works well. Um, again, it has minimal uh, exposure in Massachusetts, uh, especially area-wide. A lot, the NEDCN has some wide coverage repeaters, and as a result, uh, has a lot more area covered in the state of Massachusetts. John. Yes, sir. This is Bob, AB1EO. What does on demand mean? What is the definition of on demand? You go on to Brandmeister and you pick a talk group, and it automatically switches the repeater on to that talk group, as oh. opposed to NEDCN, Connecticut, ARES have a a specified list of talk groups you can use, and that's it. In the case of Brandmeister, you could pick from any one of the talk groups. So if, if, if a user does that, if an end user does that, does that disrupt other users of the repeater? I'm if, sorry to hear you. If, if a user, an end user does that, decides to choose a talk group, you said that it programs a repeater for that talk group. Or switch Correct. Back. Does that disrupt other users of the repeater? That may it would if they're on the same time slot. A lot of Brandmeister repeaters, the second time slot is used locally, and the first time slot is used for this on demand function. Okay. And one, one last question while we're here talking about networks. Can I'm you, sorry, I didn't hear you. 
I'm sorry, I'll speak louder. Uh, one last question while we're talking about networks here. Um, can a single radio be programmed to use, say, all three of networks? Yeah, you can program a single radio to operate on multiple networks. It's not a problem. The one advantage of, of DMR is that all the organizations running networks have agreed to pick one ID system. It's kind of like D-Style where you, you ID, but in the case of DMR, you're actually assigned an ID number, a seven digit number, and you're the only one who uses that number and you can use it on any one of these systems and it works fine. Okay. And I can tell you that it works fine because I've tried my ID on every one of these systems. Um, Thank you. And, and, and I'll explain how to get an ID, but you basically, everybody in every ham in the world that wants to get on DMR registers on a website to get an ID and they assign you a seven digit number. That's only for you. And you use that in your radios to talk on any of these systems. So this, and like I said, I have like my walkie talkie that I use to go down to Rhode Island is programmed for any DCN and brand mice. This is a brand mice, a good brand mice to repeater in Cumberland, Rhode Island. My other walkie that I use when I go to the league is, is programmed for any DCN and Connecticut ARES. Works fine. So I think, does that answer your question? Absolutely. It was great detail. Thank you. Okay. Um, Again, most of the RF activity in New England is, is based into the New England Digital Emergency Communications Network. I'm going to concentrate on them for this presentation because they're just the, the largest network in, this, in New England. Um, as last December, the system logged 221 different call signs using the system out of the 34,000 HEMs in New England. You might say not a big number, but truthfully, it is a big number because if you think about listening to your local FM repeater, there's probably 10 guys you talk to on your local FM repeater. There's not a lot of people active. Even though around the Metro Boston area with like the MMRA network, you don't hear a huge amount of activity. And that's unfortunate, but that's what happens. So let's talk about what talk groups are on NEDCN. NEDCN first has Skywarn, which is also the emergency calling channel. You can, on, you can call up any of these other ones, Worldwide, Worldwide English, North America, Northeast. I'm going to talk about these TAC and UA channels because they're kind of weird, um, but I'll talk to them, them separately. There's also a, a thing called the Parrot, which we're going to discuss in a minute. The Parrot is a nice system. It allows you to check to see if you're getting into the repeater and let you hear how you sound into the repeater. Uh, there's also every repeater has a local channel. It has a regional channel for Region North. It has, in the case of any one in Massachusetts, they have the statewide channel for Massachusetts, and they have a channel called New England Wide. And New England Wide is literally that. Every NEDCN repeater from Connecticut all the way up to Maine is on that channel. So let's take a look at what, what one of these talk, these repeaters looks like. This is W1JFR's repeater down in Walpole. And this comes off the NEDCN webpage. It tells you what talk groups he's got available. It tells you what the group call is, the code you need to put into your radio to tell it you want to use that. And it tells you what time slot it's on. That's the other bit of information your radio needs to know. It tells, it tells you if they're available all the time. Or if they have an asterisk, it means you have to kerchunk them to activate them. But for example, I go down to Rhode Island once a week to the Providence Club because I still belong down there. And I uh, talk to the guys on New England wide um, in Rhode Island through, through the uh, repeaters as I go down. I go through the, the uh, Southboro repeater, the Walpole repeater, um, and down into Rhode Island on the uh, Providence repeater. So again, these are all available on, on these as a fixed group uh, of uh, available usage groups. We, you saw the thing that said TAC, UA, and New England TAC channels. These are channels so you can establish a conversation and only use two repeaters. You don't want to key up 96 repeaters in the network for you to talk to your friend in Portland. 
But if your friend in Portland and you get together on TAC 310, you key up on TAC 310 on your, your repeater, he keys up on TAC 310 on his repeater, and you're tied together. And those only those two repeaters are in use. Um, or I've given you this chart only to show you where the TAC channels work, uh, what they're for, and uh, any little divot or things like, for example, New England TAC one is heavily used for nets, and I'll show you that in a while, the list of nets. But again, that, that, this is a, a function that's built into the system. It allows people to have QSOs with their friends without tying up 96 repeaters. For example, I talk to a guy in Sacramento once in a while. We go on TAC 311. He, he keys up his repeater on TAC 311. I key mine up and we're together. Otherwise, we'd have to key up on North America, which keys up 2,000 repeaters. It's not really a good thing to do to make friends. So TAC 311 is very nice when I want to talk to him out in Sacramento. Uh, this always gets asked. All these talk groups that are listed, what are the busiest ones? Mass Statewide is a busy talk group. Uh, on the Southboro repeaters, local is very active. On most of the others, it isn't. But local on Southboro is very active. New England wide is very active. And New England TAC 1 is very heavily used. Um, you might ask where these repeaters are. Well, you've got one in Gardner. And I happened to be driving through Groton the other day with my walkie in the middle of town. And I could key up my Groton with my walkie. And I could hear myself well through the system. So it, it looks like it works up there. Southboro Mass on VHF, UHF, a wide coverage. Sudbury Mass, which is a little more limited coverage repeater. Boston, which is cut basically inside the 128 belt. And then Acton has two repeaters. For those of you who are interested in Brandmeister, there is a, a big repeater in Cumberland, Rhode Island. Uh, if you're in Natick or South, it works real well. Uh, I don't think you're going to get it up in Groton or or Pepperell, or any of those areas. But again, I just mentioned it. People ask what the biggest coverage repeater, and that's the biggest brand Meister coverage re repeater I know of. You got to hear the parrot. And you notice on time slot one, I had the parrot listed. The parrot is a voice recorder, and how it works is you talk on your repeater on the parrot. It sends it through the network to a server in California. And then it sends it back at you about seven seconds later. So you can hear how you sound through the repeater system through the whole network. It's not the parrot isn't your on your local repeater. It is on the network. There's two advantages to that. If you hit the parrot and it works, that means the repeater is on the network. It hasn't lost its network connection. And the other thing is you, you, sound, you hear how you sound on the system end to end. So it's a good way of checking how you sound. And if you've got coverage in a particular area, it works really well. People use it every day. It's keyed up hundreds of times. Uh, and it's real simple. You go, like I when I get on Southboro, I go in one DM testing on the Parrot on Southboro. And seven seconds later, I hear that. So the Parrot is a really nice feature that helps, helps you tell if you're getting coverage and also lets you know the network's connected to the repeater you're on. There are simplex channels. This is just the information on programming. If you go and look at some of the DMR literature, they list two VHF channels and four UHF channels. Please only use these in New England, the two listed. Uh, the other ones have other uses in New England, and you'll just make for a group of unhappy people who are already using those channels. These two are used specifically for DMR, and there's almost no other activity on them. Uh, please do not put DMR on FM simplex on 5.2. Again, it, that's not right. It, you're just going to upset the guys on 5.2, and there's no reason to do it. Use 145.79 if you want to be on simplex on two meters. It works great. I'll tell you that the Providence Club, when we're up at, at Deerfield, that's what we used to talk between each other. We use 7.9. Works great. How do you get it started? Well, first, you have to get an ID. And you go to an, a, a website called radioid.net. 
and you upload a copy of your FCC license, and a couple of days later, you're going to get a seven-digit number. Uh, in Massachusetts, in, they'll, they always start with a three and a one in, in this area. Um, you go and buy a radio, you put that in, that ID in, you program the radio for what you want to talk on, and you talk. Why is the digital ID required? Because this is a, nation, a, a worldwide system, and it's routing stuff through computer, uh, basically a large computer network. For the routing to work correctly, you have to have an ID. Please, two things. Do not make your own ID up. Not a good idea. Item two, don't use a friend's ID. Because the friend may be talking and you go to another time slot and talk. The network's now going to think he went to the, that time slot. He or she went to that time slot. And it's going to knock them off while they're letting your conversation on. So please don't use your friend's talk room, but ID. Get your own. They don't cost anything. There's no reason it's a problem. Again, you go there, you get a seven-digit ID. It's going to look something like 3125180. You program that into your radio. Um, and that's what you need to know. That's the only thing you need. They keep a list, when you put it in, of your name and the town you're in. And there's a way to download that list into the radio so that when somebody's radio comes up and you look at the display and it says 3125180, it has what's called an alias. So, like, for example, if you went and put, if I talk, it's going to be 3125099 is my one of my IDs. I have two for uh, kind of a, a reason so I can test radios. But 099, instead of saying 3125099, who's that? You can put into the radio to say, when I see 3125099, display DOM, N1DM, Natick. And the radios have storage capability to do that. Again, minimum you need to program a radio is a DMR radio ID, the talk group you want to talk on, the time slot you want to talk on, the frequencies for the repeater, and a thing called color code, which is the DMR equivalent of PL. In, now, I'll warn you, on two meters, the input and output frequencies are not always 600 kilohertz apart. Uh, Nesmic decided to assign wider splits for the DMR, some of the DMR repeaters to give them a room um, and keep them out of certain parts of the subband. So that's what happens. You'll you, again, if you go back and we look at the top of the web site uh, from NEDC, and it tells you what the offset is. In this case, JFRs is minus six hundred, but there are you uh, people out at one point eight, one point four. Uh, don't be surprised. Um, if you have an link or an any tone. Radio. If you go to w10p.com, I the amount on their website is a detailed presentation of how to program the radios. Uh, I pulled it. I did it a few years ago for them, and they were kind enough to put it on the website so that people have access to it. Uh, if you go on their website and look, at, uh, scroll down, you'll see uh, it on the right hand side. On the pre uh, there's a, a bunch of presentations, and one of them is. Uh, notes on DMR programming for Elenco and Anytone. And that shows you that presentation. Um, again, you can have aliases. Now that right now with 230,000 IDs, that's sometimes are a problem if you have an older radio. Some of the very old radios only held a thousand IDs. So N0 GSG and a few other people uh, like RadioID.net have come up with things to parse those lists. So you can say, okay, I only want the IDs for people in New England on N0GSG, and it'll do that. And it'll give you that whole list to put into a radio. Okay, a couple of things. You have to have software to program the radios. Very few radios can be keyboard programmed. And it's very difficult to do. You almost have to have software to do it. Um, Anytone, Alinko, TYT, the software is free on their website. 
Motorola and Kenwood, their commercial radio divisions, Motorola is supposedly now making it free. You have to just register on their website. Kenwood, on the other hand, still charges a hefty fee. Uh, I know because I just bought a software package for some Kenwood radios. Um, for those of you who buy uh, Chinese radios like Redivis, TV, TYT, and uh, the Bolfang 1701, RT Systems has a programming package for DMR for those. Uh, I warn you that RT Systems is somewhat limited in the radios they do. If you want to buy a radio and use the RT Systems package, heavily recommend you go to their website and see which radios they're currently supporting. It's, uh, it's not hard to program. It's a little involved. There are a huge amount of YouTube videos on how to do it. You basically say DMR programming and put the radio model in, and you're going to find a YouTube video. There are guys around to help. I'm sure if you go on the Gardner repeater and ask for help, the Gardner DMR repeater, uh, they'll help out. Mm -hmm. um, but also, NEDCN has posted on their website a couple of sample code plugs so you can see what they look like. And you could upload them to your radio and just put your ID in and try them. Um, so there, there are, uh, I think five or six right now on their website. Um, if you go to it, this always comes up. People hear about these hotspots. Hotspots are very low power radios that are designed to be connected to the internet. So you can get on these networks remotely. So you can literally talk on your radio to a hotspot and the hotspot has a, uh, a, a, a internet connection. And it goes to a server that either goes to the Brandmeister network or the NEDCN network. They work well. Uh, they take some degree of programming. Uh, again, a little bit involved. Once you get on DMR with the radio, there's always people around that uh, know the hotspots, especially the, uh, the different versions. And you can ask. There is a, a net where you can ask for help every Monday night. And I'll show you that one on the New England YDMR net. If you get on there, there's always somebody to answer a question, or at least they'll get you to the right person. If you have a hot spot, uh, for example, Ridgecom now sells any tone radios. They advertise it in QST, the radio and a hot spot together. Um, these talk groups are available on the hot spot for the NEDCN network. Um, and they work fine. I have a bunch of friends who have hotspots. I don't personally need one. I live, I live eight miles from the best coverage repeater in the area. I can sit in my easy chair upstairs on my DMR radio and talk to people without a hotspot. So I really don't have one. Known good hotspots, there's an outfit called Shock that only sells direct. Their current open spot three works well. Zoom spot is sold by Ham Radio Outfit. Skybridge is sold by Bridgecom Systems. Um, Jumbo Spot is a Chinese one that's available on the internet. A little more involved to program, but it does work. People are using them. So I just mentioned them because everybody always asks about these. They hear about hotspots. The one advantage to hotspots, too, is most of the newer ones. If you want to use your D-Star radio on DMR or on... Um, uh, um, some of the other systems, you can go cross mode. For example, you could go between, if you have a, I have a friend who has a Yesu system fusion radio. He's got his pot spot program for it and he talks on the DMR now with it. Mm -hmm. So it, it is possible to go cross, uh, across digital platforms using a hotspot. Again, you have to have an internet connection. Some people do use their phone. Some people have a wide interconnect, internet connection to the house. Other people use the router on their house. It's up to you what you use for the internet connection. What happens if a, this hap, This was a question that came up at the Framingham Club about four or five years ago, and I always put it in. What happens if the repeater loses its network connection? Well, the local channel on the repeater always works because it's local. It doesn't go through the network. Every other channel on the list goes through the network, but the local always works. There are two ways to check if you're getting, if the repeater is on the network, one is to go on the parrot, like I told you earlier, 
say this is N1 DM testing on Southboro. If you hear N1 DM testing on Southboro seven seconds later, that means the network is connected to the repeater. The other one is, is NEDCN has a function called Check War, uh, NetWatch. If you go on NEDCN's website at NEDCN.org, you'll see a thing for NetWatch, a tab. You go to the one for Massachusetts, key up, and you'll see if the repeater's keying up when you key up. It's very simple. And that page actually looks like this. So what it does is it, it says, where is this coming from on the, uh, under the source list? Peer alias, but radio alias is who's talking. So again, you can see it'll tell you who it is, where they are, um, what, what talk group they're on, how strong their signal is, uh, what the site name is. And that lost column, if it gets above 2%, means your signal is not going to sound well. If you, it's done to 2%, and a lot of times it is, you'll be fine. Again, this is exactly what's on the NEDC and website. And to make this easy, uh, in blue, if you look at the uh, connection box at the top for the page, you'll see I've put the actual, uh, what you have to put in to get this up uh, in blue, outlined in blue. People buy handhelds and say, well, can I add an amplifier to my radio when I'm in the car at home? Yes, you can. There's one company that makes it under a couple of different names. Um, I have no experience with them. The issue is because of this 30 millisecond transmit time and uh, uh, the whole signals are contained in that 30 milliseconds, the, the, the amplifier has to be able to switch extremely fast. BTEC and RADTEL, also known as VSC, are basically both selling the same amplifier. What are the repeated time out time is set for? Typically two to three minutes. I would recommend you set your radio for two. Uh, there are some talk groups that are two minutes, some talk groups that are three. Easy to just set your radio for two. Again, we talked about what the multiple networks are. Uh, activity always comes up on Southboro. There's probably 20 to 30 minutes a day of activity. Sudbury has minimal activity. And again, Sudbury is not a wide area site. It has a fair amount of coverage. It basically covers from Acton down to Natick. Um, <laughs> but if you get on Southboro, AE1C, one of his two repeaters, he's got VHF and UHF there, fairly busy. I always get asked this because a D-star, when the signal starts to go away, you're going to sound like Donald Duck like you do on D-star. No. But you will hear the state signal start to break up when the pack, packet loss gets above 2%. Uh, it will not, it will just break up. That's the answer in a nutshell. You always ask, people always ask what radio is available. This is probably the most common right now, uh, the D878 series of radios from Anytone. Buying from Bridgecom, you can buy from Ham Radio Outlet. One important thing when you buy a radio, buy the programming cable. You're going to need it. This is probably the newest mobile that's available. And Alinko makes a similar model. This is called a D578. Uh, it's a three-band three radio, two 220 and 440. There are no 220 DMR repeaters, and 220 on this radio is low power. I think it's like eight watts or something. Two and 440 are full power, 45 watts. You can buy this from Bridgecom. You can buy it from Connect Systems. You can buy it from here, Radio Outlet. It makes really no difference. Again, make sure you buy a programming cable. I have one of these, a Linko MD5 I've had since 2019. It works great. Plenty of ID space. Again, available from here, Radio Outlet. There's currently a new version, which I think is MD5-XGT. Makes no difference. It works. Again, I've been using one of these for years. Connect Systems makes a relatively inexpensive, both dual band and single band mobiles, the CS800. Uh, you buy them directly from them. They have some little quirky things. They were actually designed as commercial radios originally. They do work, um, but they have some little quirky features like scan. If you 
if you're scanning and somebody starts talking, turning scan off is a pain in the neck. You have to listen until they they uh, break for a breath, and then you can turn the scan off. But other than that, they're good radios, and they do keep updating the firmware for them to improve them, and they do take suggestions for improvements. Uh, Connect Systems has been very good. I have a Connect Systems walkie I bought in 2015, and it works fabulous. Never had a problem with it. How can you tell if your radio is working? This is pretty good. There's three wide area nets that get on every week. Monday night at 8 p.m. on, on Talk Group 3181, which is on time slot two, is New England wide DMR net. It runs 30 to 40 minutes. You'll hear about 40 people checking everywhere from Prince Edward Island all the way down to, uh, uh, you know, areas of New York on, on Long Island. Uh, there are 96 repeaters tied together for this net. There's a lot of people. Um, you'll, the one advantage of this net is they ask when you check in if anybody has questions. If you tell me you have a question, they put you on a list, and at the end, they'll attempt to answer your question. If not, they'll try to tell you who to go to to get an answer. Um, Thursday nights at 7.30 is the Sky One net also um, uh, that on the Sky One talk group. It all, uh, it's obviously it's particular Sky One, but you can hear people talking and make sure your radio is programmed and working. Sunday night at 8 p.m. on New England TAC One is the Providence Radio Association net. It currently is on the Southboro, Hudson, New Hampshire, and Providence repeaters. If you get on another repeater like Gardner and you click New England TAC 1 in Kerchunk about 801, you'll hear me talking on the net control for this. Again, we'll try to help you. If we can't, we'll refer you to somebody. Um, that net is very active. We have 9 to 10 check-ins a week. We're there for 15 or 20 minutes between 8 and 8.20. And... Uh, Again, you don't have to be a member of the Providence Club to join that. We are an open net. We do talk about club activities and things like that, but you're more than welcome to join us. We have friends from Maine and Vermont who check in all the time, New Hampshire. Um, so don't feel that you can't uh, check into that net because it says it's the Providence Radio Association that you're more than welcome. These are some websites. Um, I'll tell you that the main DMR net, uh, maindmr.org website also has some really nice introductory information. If you want to learn about DMR, they have things that explain how the network works, how the radios work. Uh, it's got some really nice stuff. I put on the end of this, some terminology. You're going to hear these terms at times. You're going to see them in other presentations. So I just kind of stuck them in here to help you out so you have some idea of what they are for example you hear people talk about code plugs that's just the programming for the radio uh it's nothing bizarre it's it goes back to an old term that was used in the two-way radio business uh you'll hear the talk about zones for those of you who have police scanners that's a scan bank color code is the digital pl uh so again these, these are all things I will also tell you that the one thing I kind of like to mention is because this is a commercial system, there is the option that on, on the software that says encrypt. Please do not encrypt your radio. It A is illegal in ham radio to have encryption as a, a method of limiting access. And B, you have to set up encryption codes right. It's not a straightforward process. You and the person you're talking to have to make sure you coordinate. They're heavily used in public safety encryption systems. I don't, again, they're not legal in ham radio, and there's no legitimate reason any ham should be running encryption. Um, it's different than coding the signal because you're purposely trying to keep other people from hearing it. Um, again, FTH encoded but it's not encrypted same thing with dmr same thing with d star they're encoded but they're not encrypted please do not turn on encryption uh you will not be popular um so any case that's my presentation i'm more than glad to answer any questions
sorry uh, if I, I i know i speak a little quickly so if there's anything you want me to go back to i'll be more than glad to do that tom hey this is jamie k1aun can you hear me okay i can yeah <clears throat> yeah so i have a question about um how the time slots are synchronized is it is it the the repeater sets up the time hack for the time slots or are they all uh syncing up to gps or you know? no what happens is when you key your radio and you say i'm on time slot one the repeater sees that and synchronizes you and the you and them okay so the the repeater defines where the time slots are correct your radio will sync to the repeater it does not need gps or any other correct you time. don't need any you don't standing. need any external timing reference okay Don, this is uh, bill k1 you hear me? i'm having a little here trouble hearing you build again Let me go to walk my voice is can you hear me better now a little bit um you talked about how there were some repeaters you could sign on and get information find people to help you and all that but yep if you don't have a dmr radio is there any way to get on those repeaters no but what i would do is if you go to the nedcn website there's a contact page and somebody will get back to you thank you And I'll, I'll, I'll be nice and say that if you folks have a problem, um, my email is on, uh, is available. Uh, I obviously Bruce has it. Bruce, you have my permission. If somebody has a question and send, have them send me their email, send me their uh, information on my email and I'll try to help out, help you out. All right. Does anybody else have any questions for Dom? Nothing heard. Dom, thank you very much. Uh, this was a great presentation. We appreciate it. Okay, Bruce, and I'm going to send you a copy of this tomorrow as a PDF so everybody can read it. They won't have to have PowerPoint. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Let me unshare here. I can figure out how to do that. Oh, there it is. I see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I think I've stopped. <laughs> I think you're there, but hang on. 7-3, Dom. Thank you. 7-3.